Speaking of long shots, going way back to 1984, it was Hollywood, the very first time they did the Breeders' Cup. And in the Classic, at the finish, you had everything. You had a disqualification for starters. You had a horse with earmuffs. You had a favorite. You had a long shot. Let's see that race, the 1984 Breeders' Cup Classic. They all got away, but it's the finish, Randy, that we uh, paid most attention three to, right? Three quarters in one, ten and three, and slew a goal now. He's charging on the outside up to engage the leader. Wild again, it's wild again with the lead. Slew a goal. Cordero board at Tex now with three furlongs to go. Those two are matching stride for stride. Here comes Track Baron. He's putting in his run. And Gate Dancer, he's in full stride now. And he swings wide for the final quarter mile. On the inside, Wild again is game, and he's holding on to the lead by a head. Slew of gold is right at his neck. Here comes Gate Dancer on the outside there in the final furlong. Wild again, desperately holding on to the lead. Slew of gold is right there in between horses. Gate Dancer on the outside. What a finish. Wild again. Gate Dancer. Slew of gold in between them. Those three in a dramatic finish. And here's the wire. Wild again does it. At 31 to 1, was it not? Wild again with Pat Day up. Can you recall how wild that finish was? What a day to start oh, the Breeders' Cup. What a way to culminate it. Jack Vanberg, the trainer of Gate Dancer, thought wild again should have come down. Angel Cordero on Slew of Gold said if it were in New York, it would have been a double disqualification. Controversy, excitement, it had it all. Now there's Pat Day after it was ruled official. He was the one at 31 to 1, knocking off Slew of Gold, who uh, was in with an entry at three to five. So the big long shot upsetting the big favorite. And joining us on this very set is Pat Day. There he is, the all-time leader in wins and the all-time leader in money earned as a jockey in Breeders' Cup activity. And he actually does okay in other racing too, does he not? <laughs> Third all-time leading jockey uh, in all races encompassing there behind only Lafitte Pinkai and Bill Shoemaker has won over 7,000 races in his career. That's quite a quite a resume. That, and that was quite a build-up just to get your name introduced. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's nice to be on with you. How you recall that race, can you describe what what went through your head as you're coming down the stretch? Very first Breeders' Cup, so it's this brand new thing, and then you come into one of the best races you've probably been involved in. Well, it's, uh, it's probably the most important race in my career. I, I don't know for sure just uh, uh, what role it has played in taking my career to the next level, but I know it's been monumental and, and very influential and very helpful. Uh, it, was a, it was a great day of racing. Uh, I was blessed with the opportunity to ride Wild again, whom I had ridden before. Uh, the way the race unfolded, uh, I know Mugatia was in there with Slew of Gold just as a rabbit to ensure that there was a realistic pace so that Slew of Gold could come and run him down. Uh, we broke side by side as we were going under the wire the first time. Mugatia took a step out. My horse shied from him and basically from that point on uh, had a tendency to want to drift, which he did anyway. We can and, uh, uh, run that video and you can re-describe there. You said you got yeah, away. Right, right here, you'll see Mugatia just kind of take a step out. Well, and now we're, we're on the backside. But as you can see, I'm in front. Uh, what happened when, when Mugatia took a step out, my horse took a step out, locked onto the bridle, and, and basically was running off. And I was trying to keep him in and, and get him to settle as best I could. Now here, Slow Gold runs up on the outside of me. And uh, Wild again had, had every license, every right to just throw in the towel. But uh, I'll be very honest with you, I don't believe I've ever thrown a leg over a horse that tried any harder than he did from the quarter pole to the wire. Uh, it, it, as he did in this particular race. In previous occasions, uh, he had run a similar race, and when this point would come in the race, he would actually throw in the towel. But right here, it's almost as if he knew that his connections had put up 360,000 to make him eligible. He was not about to let him down, and he just refused to get past. I mean, he was he was digging in, and you can't see it here on the pan shot, but on the head shot, the head-on shot, you can see he was digging so hard, the dirt clouds were going straight up in the air. It must have been 20 or 30 feet. It was it was an incredible. Uh, incredible effort by by a great. Uh, what about great Randy's? Individual. What about Randy's notion where they, there was some dispute about the way the claim of foul went? Well, there was. Obviously, uh, everybody except the connections with Wild again were, were disappointed. <laughs> uh, Angel Cordero, as you said, uh, as you had alluded to uh, earlier, Randy, he got on the phone, was claiming a foul about, against both myself and Gate Dancer. Uh, Gate Dancer's trainer, Jack Vanberg, thought that Wild again should come down, which would put him in the winner's position. Uh, the Stewarts deliberated for a long time and, and looked at the pictures for a long time before they came to the conclusion that uh, Gate Dancer had, in fact, been the culprit. He was the one that, that uh, he ran up on the outside of, 
of Slough Gold and myself, and then went to lugging in, which he'd had a history of doing in the past, uh, in the in the final strides, and and uh, took away Slough Gold's r running room, and and uh, actually I was, you know, I'd left it in the stewards' hands. I think they made the correct call, but I've gone back and looked at that, that the rerun of the head-on of that, and if you'll look at the Harrell marks, uh, where my horse started off the turn, he was actually closer to the to the to the rail at the wire than it was at the quarter pole. So actually through the course of the stretch run, I was able to pull him in and pull him in and pull him in, keep him running, and really didn't uh, contribute uh, to the incident outside of the fact that I was just there. What, what do you think that race did for your career? Oh, I, I, you know what, I don't know that I'll ever know for sure, but I do know that, that it played a major part in my having been selected for the Eclipse Award that year. Uh, certainly the exposure, uh, national, international, that I received through that victory. Uh, had it opened up a, a lot of doors, took my career to the next level, uh, and really uh, uh, created some momentum that has carried over to today. Do you remember the days that Randy was talking about the build-up to create the Breeders' Cup, and, and there was some dispute about whether or not it was a smart thing, it was going to favor certain breeders, certain owners. What, were the, what was the in the, the mind of the jockeys at the time that it had to only be looked upon as a good thing, all this all this big money to ride for? Well, certainly, uh, when I first heard about it, I said, there, you know, I just couldn't contemplate or anticipate something like that, something so huge uh, that would ever take place in my lifetime. I said, nah, this will never come to pass. Ten million dollars, seven races, one day of racing. I mean, they had a, a scattering of million dollar races at the time, which was the biggest. And to think that they were going to have one that was worth three million, one worth two million, five that were worth a, worth a million apiece on one card was just hard to fathom. And uh, so when it when it came to pass, I couldn't see it as anything but a plus for the entire industry. And, and I think it's played out that way. Can you walk us through another race last year? And you're back with the same horse this year, right, Kathy? If not yes, expected sir. to win last year, but it did. Take us through how you won last year's race and where you're going to be this year. Well, in hopefully, the stretch last season. Uh, right here, he's on the uh, on the inside or middle of the field, actually. I just went to my left hand there. Uh, he ran a dynamite race last year. As you said, he was not expected to win. Uh, he, he has shown moments of brilliance, but he's been a bit on the inconsistent side. Last year, coming up to the race, Mr. Lucas informed me uh, uh, the day before the race, he said, Pat, he said, I don't know if we can win this thing, but this horse is really touting me. This horse is training as well or better than he ever has. He's, he's loving this racetrack, and he's doing everything absolutely correct, and uh, I expect a big effort out of him, and, and he gave it to us. He broke incredibly sharp that day, ducked in just a little bit. I straightened him up. There was a horse that Chris McCarron was on, came from the West Coast, and forgive me, I can't recall his name, but a very quick horse. He outfooted us going under the wire the first time, and into the first turn, as we come into the backside, I was able to work my way to the outside of him. At that time, we, at that point, we were second. Uh, Gate Dancer was very relaxed and running very kind up underneath of me in a, in, in a key position, I felt. Uh, towards the end of the backside, Bud Royal run up on the outside of us. At that point, Gate Dancer grabbed the bit, dropped down, accelerated, Now I thought, oh no, we got a half mile left to run. He's using himself up and I won't have anything to finish. And about as soon as I got that thought completed, he turned a bit loose, relaxed, put his head up, and, and just coasted around the turn and stayed that way until you seen when I put my stick over my left hand and encouraged him. And at that point, he dropped down and gave me a nice acceleration and finished up running. Just a, just a marvelous, marvelous well, Cat, effort. Cat Thief hasn't won since last year's Breeders' Cup Classic, but you and Lucas have always combined to, to collaborate to get things done, even in those tough positions. Good luck to you in that on Saturday. Thanks for being our guest here. A good way to start this show with the all-time leader in wins and money earned among the jockeys. We're coming back to Louisville where the Breeders' Cup Classic coverage, the road show, continues on ESPN Classic right after this break.